Okay, let's explore this rather in-depth warranty problem. So the first paragraph is essentially a lecture. It says that a warranty is a company's promise or guarantee to repair or replace any defective goods for a specified period of time after the date of purchase. And there are two types. There's assurance type warranties and service type warranties. Now, the assurance type warranty, sometimes called a base warranty, doesn't provide any additional goods or services to the customer. The seller is merely providing a guarantee of quality. The service type warranty, sometimes called an extended warranty, exists if the customer has the option to purchase the warranty separately or if the warranty provides a service to the customer beyond the period covered by the assurance type warranty. So here's our situation. You can see that right here, this little paragraph here. Gamaro Products manufactures wireless routers for home use. They had sales of $11.7 million during the current year, and the cost of merchandise was $5.5 million. A little bit of background here. They offer assurance-type warranties that covers all repair costs, including parts and labor, for one year, and the company estimates or estimate, estimates that the warranty cost will amount to 60% of total sales. In the year in which it sold the products, the company also sold 35,000 service type warranties at a price of $65 per contract. It received cash. And then uh, the company sold the contracts at the end of the year and did not recognize any warranty revenue in the year of sale. The service type warranty covers all parts and labor for three years after the expiration of the assurance type warranty. And the company estimate makes an estimate that the service type warranty will be used 60% in the first year of the contract, then 22% in the second year, and 18% in the third year. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is record the sale. So we debit sales for 11.7 million, excuse me, we debit accounts receivable for 11.7 million and credit sales in the same amount. That information was simply given to us. All right, let me slide up. We've got to record the cost of goods sold. All that information was also given to us, $5.5 million. So we increase cost of goods sold with a debit, and we reduce merchandise inventory, uh, $5.5 million. Okay, so they're using the uh, perpetual inventory system. All right, so what happens next? Let's slide up and see. Okay, we get a little bit of a lecture again here. Ideally, Firms account for assurance type warranties by using an accrual basis approach, and with this approach, the firm matches the cost of providing the warranty with the sales revenue. Okay, specifically, it expenses the estimated expenditures related to providing the repairs or product replacement in the year of the sale and accrues the estimated liability for the repair cost in the year of the sale. Now, customer claims under warranty when, in the year when the actual repair takes place then satisfy the, law, the liability without charging any additional expenses. In other words, we're following cruel-based accounting. So the firm recognizes expenses in the year of the sale, but not in the year the repairs take place. All right, so let's take a look and say, all right, well, so how would we record uh, the warranty expense? Well, it's 702000 How did we come up with that? Well. They estimated that it would be 6% of revenue. Revenue was $11.7 million. If we take 6% of that number, we get $702,000. So we record the warranty expense to match the revenues in the year of sale. And we, take, uh, we record that liability on our balance sheet, um, perhaps in an account called contingent warranty liability. Uh, sometimes I've seen it just called warranties or warranty liability. Okay, then we, re then we incur actual repairs for the current year. Okay, there's no additional warranty expense recognized when the repair takes place. Okay, so we've got to credit any cash dispersed, parts used, labor incurred, and so on, and debit the warranty liability. So let's, uh, uh, and, and, and what that actually does is liquidate that warranty obligation. In other words, it reduces it. So during the year of the sale, the customer made warranty claims of 276000 
185,000 was paid in cash for parts, 91,000 was incurred for labor. So if we have that information, our debits and credits would look like what you see on the screen right there. We would liquidate the contingent warranty liability, you know, reduce it by debiting it, and credit cash for the 185,000 of the parts and uh, credit uh, the labor to wages payable. All right, the next part of this lengthy warranty expense uh, uh, warranty liability problem uh, covers service type warranty contract sales in the current year. All right, so a service type warranty is essentially an insurance policy that covers the repair of the product purchased for the period beyond the assurance type warranty time limit. And the service type warranty is often sold separately. So the time period for the service type warranties will vary depending on you know, what's being offered in the products. Okay, so when a company sells the warranty contract, it accounts for the warranty as an advanced collection, records the liability for the unearned revenue. In other words, just because we sold the warranty didn't mean we earned it at that point. So the company sold 35,000 service type warranties at a price of $65 per contract and received cash. So what do we have to do here? Well, what we have to do is debit the cash we received and credit the unearned warranty revenue. Now, how did I come up with that amount? That's 35,000 warranties times $65 each. Okay? Okay, and then finally, we've got to recognize the contract revenue for the three years. And I think I'm only going to do the first year as an example. So as time passes, we have to accrue that unearned warranty revenue. Now, in this example, they told us that they believed that 60% uh, of uh, the warranty expense related to unearned warranty revenues would would occur in the first year then 22 and 18 okay so they have a history that they're basing this on and it's an estimate and we're going to rely on that estimate so what are we going to do well we're going to debit under warranty revenue essentially liquidating a portion of it and showing the revenue that we earned now i'm only going to demonstrate year one here it's a million three six five how did i come up with that i took the 2,275,000 of the unearned warranty and multiplied it times 60%. Okay, and then we would simply duplicate this entry for years two and three, only we would use 22% and 18% instead. All right, so I hope this was helpful to you in seeing what's involved with um, accounting for warranties.